Good morning, students. I'm Dr. Betty, continuing with the nuclear chemistry lesson six. In lesson five, we looked at the nuclear fission, where we say that this is a nuclear reaction in which a stable heavier nucleus on being bombarded by slow moving neutrons split into lighter stable nuclei of almost equal size, at the same time emitting neutrons and releasing large amount of energy. Here, the fusion reaction is known as an exogenic reaction, that is energy is released. There were two types of reaction. We have uncontrolled all explosive fusion reaction and the controlled fusion reaction. In uncontrolled fusion reaction, the slow moving neutron was bombarded with the uranium-235 nucleus to give rise to two other particles and to two other nuclei and three neutrons were emitted. Then these secondary neutrons bombard more uranium particles to give rise to nine neutrons. And in each stage, a, a large amount of energy is produced. The reaction continues until an explosion is produced. In a controlled nuclear reaction, if two of the secondary neutrons are absorbed by the cadmium and boron rod, or boron rod before they cause the fusion of other uranium nuclei, only one neutron is left, which causes the fusion. This reaction proceeds at a steady and slow controlled amount of energy is produced which can be converted into electricity and also can be used for treatment of cancer and other use. We went further to look at the atomic bomb. This consists of small pieces of uranium-235 isotopes and between them, explosive material, trinitrotorin is placed, which is when fired, the pieces come together and neutrons obtained from radon and beryllium source strike the piece of uranium resulting in a rapid and controlled chain reaction. Today, we are going to look at nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a nuclear reaction in which lighter nuclei combine together to form a single heavy and more stable nucleus and a large amount of energy is also released. Nuclear reaction, which shows the formation of one helium nucleus by the combination of two deuterium deuterons is a fusion reaction. In this reaction, energy equal to 23.75 mL volts is also released. So the fusion of the two deuterons giving rise to the helium nucleus and 23.5, 23.75 mL volt energy is an example of a nuclear fusion reaction. Let us look at the condition necessary for the fusion reactions to take place or to occur. There are mainly two. The first one is high temperature. When the two lighter nuclei are brought together to each other to combine to form the heavy nucleus, the protons present in their respective nuclei repel each other. 
In order to overcome the repulsive forces, both the lighter nuclei should be given high kinetic energy. That is, the nuclei should be fused at higher temperature. You always know that when the temperatures of a certain particle is increased, or particles, the kinetic energy also increases among themselves. Thus, nuclear fusion takes place when only when the temperature is very high, which is almost equal to four times 10 to the power six degrees Celsius. Since the nuclear fusion reaction requires very high temperature, these reactions are also called thermal nuclear reactions or temperature dependent nuclear reactions. The second condition is high pressure. High pressure is also essential so that collisions are frequent. High temperature and higher pressure both can be obtained only by the explosion of an atomic bomb. Therefore, on Earth, fusion reaction can only take place during the explosion of an atomic bomb. However, in the sun and the stars, high temperatures is, al is already there. Energy released in the nuclear fusion reaction. In a nuclear fusion reaction, energy is released. That is, nuclear fusion reaction is an exogenic reaction. The release of energy takes place because some mass is lost. Since the sum of the masses of the reactant is greater than the sum of the masses of the product. The lost mass can be converted into energy and which is released in the reaction and can be calculated with the help of Einstein's mass energy relationship, which is equal to the mc squared where E is the energy, M is the mass, and C is the velocity of light or speed of light. If mass lost is in MU, then the energy released is equal to the mass lost times 931.5 mil electron volts. The magnitude of energy released in a nuclear fusion reaction is so high that scientists have not as yet been able to control its magnitude. That is to say, in a nuclear fusion reaction, uncontrolled amount of energy is obtained. And hence, this energy cannot be used for the production of electricity. If you remember in the nuclear fusion, the magnitude of energy obtained in the fusion, in the fusion of uranium-235 nucleus by slow neutrons is also high, but it can be controlled and converted into electricity in a nuclear reactor and also put to other use. Now let us see how we can calculate the amount of energy released in a nuclear fusion, in the fusion of four hydrogen nuclei. The formation of one helium nucleus by the fusion of the four hydrogen nuclei can be shown as the four hydrogen nuclei fused together to give helium nucleus and two positrons. The mass of the reactants is equal to four times the mass of one hydrogen atom to give us 4.031324. And then the mass of the product or products is equal to the mass of helium times two times the mass of plus two times the mass of one Postrons, which is equal to 4.003672. 
Therefore, the mass lost is the equal to the difference between the mass of the product and the mass of the reactant. Mass of the reactant and the mass of the product, which is equal to 0 0.0276052. Therefore, the energy released in the formation of one helium is equal to the mass lost times 931.5 mu electron volts, which is equal to 25.714 mu electron volts. Energy released in the formation of one mole of helium nucleus from four moles of hydrogen is equal to the energy released times the Avogadro's constant, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. So if you want to convert it to mill electron volts, then we multiply by 1.602 times 10 to the power negative 16, which is giving us an energy of 24.0. 806 times 10 to power 8 kilojoules. So energy released in the fusion of one gram of helium or one gram of hydrogen, we divide the energy obtained in the kilojoule by four times the mass of hydrogen. Why by four? Because there are only four atoms which we are fused together, which is equal to 6.0. 153 times 10 to the power 8 kilojoule. If we compare this energy with the energy produced on the burning of one gram of coal, the difference between the two is very high. Origin of the sun, origin of the energy of the sun and the star, we'll call it solar energy. The temperature in the center of the sun is extremely high, about two times 10 past seven Kelvin. Sun has been providing us continuously heat and light for the last billion of years, and will continue to do so for the similar other period. Yet its temperature has never decreased, nor it is likely to decrease even in the future. Now we can ask ourselves, how is the energy produced in the sun? And why does the temperature of the sun not decrease? It was in 1932 when Hansen Benz answered the above question by proposing that the production of heat in the sun is due to the fusion reaction which is going on inside the sun or the star or the time. Analysis of the spectrum of the light emitted by the sun has shown that the sun contains a tremendous quantity of hydrogen atoms or protons. According to them, four hydrogen nuclei are fused together at higher temperature prevailing in the sun and form one helium nucleus and two positrons and a large amount of heat and light energy is also produced. So fusion of four hydrogen nuclei by the high temperatures in the sun give rise to the helium and two positrons and the 24.6 mil electron volt of energy is given off or is emitted. The liberated energy produces extremely high temperature in the sun and is also supplied in the form of heat and light by the sun to the earth. The sun, therefore, may be regarded as a big thermonuclear furnace. Here it should be noted that the conversion of the four hydrogen nuclei into one helium nucleus, which is the source of the solar energy, 
is so slow, even at such a higher temperature prevailing in the sun that it, it takes several million years for the conversion of one gram of hydrogen atom or hydrogen into helium. Then we can ask ourselves why the sun produces energy at higher rate if the conversion is too slow. The answer is because of the large size of or huge size of the sun. Hydrogen hydrogen fusion reaction does not take place through a single step. It occurs through two types of cycles. The first one is the proton proton cycle or PP cycle. This cycle proceeds through the following steps. And in each step, energy is released. So hydrogen, fusing with another hydrogen to produce a deuteron plus postron and 0.42 mil electron volt energy is produced. The second one, the deuteron fusing with the hydrogen to give the triton and 5.5 Millie electron volt energy is emitted. Then the two triton, tritorium fused together to give the helium and the two protons plus 12.8 millie electron volt is produced. Then on addition of equation one times two, equation B times two and C, we get four hydrogen nuclei fusing together to produce helium nucleus and two positrons plus 24.64 mil electron voltage energy, volt energy is emitted. Another one is the carbon nitrogen cycle, call it a CN cycle. This cycle operates through six steps and in each step, energy is also released. Here, carbon-12 fuses with hydrogen to give unstable nitrogen-13 and 1.94 mil electron volt energy is emitted. So this unstable nitrogen-13 disintegrates to give carbon-13 plus a postron and 1.2 mil electron volts energy is produced. Carbon-13 fuses with hydrogen to give 14, nitrogen-14 and 7.55 mil electron volts energy is also emitted. Nitrogen-14 fuses with the hydrogen to give unstable oxygen-15 nucleus and 7.29 mil electron volts is emitted. The unstable oxygen 15 disintegrates to give 15 nitrogen and a postron and 1.74 mil electron volts is produced. Nitrogen 15 fuses with hydrogen to give carbon 12 plus a helium nucleus and the 4.96 mil electron volts energy is released. So when we look at what we, we add all the above six equation, we get the four hydrogen nuclei fusing together to give a helium nucleus plus two positrons and the 24.68 mil electron volt energy released. So when we look at this final stage, carbon appears again. So carbon can be regarded as a catalyst or can be taken as a catalyst that is regenerated at the end of the reaction. This cycle does not contribute much to the production of solar energy. Since the temperature at the sun center is the order of two times 10 to power seven Kelvin, is too slow for this reaction to proceed. In certain more massive stars, 
the temperature prevailing is, is many times higher than the solar end temperature. At this high temperature, carbon nitrogen cycle chain reaction proceeds very well and is a principal source of the energy of the massive stars. An integrating question might arise or we can ask ourselves. The production of helium, the production of heat energy, hydrogen nuclei present in the sun are being consumed continuously due to their conversion into helium nuclei. Now, here is a question or question arises. If the consumption of hydrogen nuclei goes on continuously, when then a day will come or the day may come, when all the stock of the hydrogen in the sun will be consumed and no more fusion reaction will take place. Hence, no energy will be obtained. The answer to that, when all the hydrogen nuclei are exhausted by their conversion into helium nuclei or nuclei, the temperature and the pressure in the sun will decrease. The sun will shrink in size and its own gravitational attraction. The temperature in the sun will again, will again become high, so high that helium nuclei will fuse together to form the carbon pillow isotope. And a tremendous amount of energy will be liberated. That is three helium nuclei fusing together to give carbon 12 plus huge amount of energy. In this way, sun will regain its lost sunshine and will become as brighter as ever or as bright as ever. Now let us compare comparison between nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction. We look at the similarities. The cost of the production of energy is the same. That is in all both the nuclear fusion and the nuclear fusion loss in mass is also observed or mass defect. That is energy is released because the sum of the masses of the product is less than the sum of the masses of the reactants. In all or in both, the mass which is lost is converted into energy and this energy is generated in the reaction. The differences between fusion and fusion. In a fission reaction, heavier nuclear split up into two lighter nuclei, while in nuclear fusion, two lighter nuclei combine together or fuse together to form a heavier nucleus. In the nuclear fusion, the nuclear fusion is a chain reaction. Yet in a nuclear fusion, there is no such chain reaction. In nuclear fusion, the fusion, the fusion is carried out by using slow moving neutrons. While in a nuclear fusion, reaction takes place at higher temperature and pressure since these are essential for the overcoming the repulsive forces existing between the protons present in the lighter nuclei. The amount of energy produced in the nuclear fusion reaction is much more than that generated in the fusion reaction. Since the loss in mass in the fusion reaction is greater than in the fusion reaction. Then the production or the products, e.g. barium-139 and krypton-94, 
obtained in a nuclear fission reaction are little are radioactive and emit harmful radioactive radiation. These products are harmful. So the problem of disposal of these harmful products arises. The products of helium, on the other hand, obtained in the fusion reaction are not rapid radioactive and hence are harmless. Let us now look at the hydrogen bomb. Hydrogen bomb consists of deuterium and tritium core, which is surrounded by an atomic bomb assembly. When atomic bomb is exploded, explosion takes place and extremely high temperature and pressure are attained. High temperature and high pressure obtained make the deuterium and tritium nuclei to fuse together to produce helium nucleus and uncontrolled amount of energy is generated. So that is deuterium plus tritium to give rise to the high helium nucleus plus a neutron and 17.6 millilectron electron volts energy is released. This reaction takes place at a very high speed, which cannot be controlled. That is, uncontrolled fusion reaction takes place in a hydrogen bomb. Now, let us look at the comparison between hydrogen bomb and an atomic bomb. An atomic bomb, uncontrolled fission reaction takes place. The mass of the fissionable material, that is uranium-235 nucleus, should be greater than its critical mass. On the other hand, in a hydrogen bomb, any amount of fusible, fusible material can be taken. The amount of energy released in a hydrogen bomb is several times greater than that produced during the explosion of an atomic bomb. So next time, we are going to look at radioactivity.